Good. 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 Damn it. Oh, good, you're back. We need ice. And lotion. Well, look at you all cleaned up. If I didn't do something to calm down, I was going to end up strangling you. How are the showers? Well, the good news is the showers are great. The bad news is there's a wait that's going to last for hours. The fucking what? Yeah, you're not getting cleaned up till after midnight. You son of a bitch. That's what happens when you decide to leave me to do a pre-trip all by myself. Oh, I see how it is. Well, seeing as though you're not going anywhere and we're not going anywhere till morning... Looks like you got time to help me out with a video. All right. What are we mansplaining today? Yeah, it sounds kind of like this. Aye, aye, Captain. In reality, it's more like this. No goddamn signal! It's a lot simpler than it sounds, but it's also more complicated than you think. First, let's go over the apps. There are several trucking apps that you can download for free that'll help you navigate your truck route. There's Trucker Path and Hammer, several others. They cost money, some of them are free, but the general idea is the same. They will generate a truck route from where you are to where you need to go and will avoid low bridges or restricted road. If you didn't want to use up all your data, you could spend a decent buck and buy yourself a truck GPS. One that's manufactured by either Garmin or Rand McNally. What those can do is not just generate a truck route for you, but they can also lay out truck stops and rest areas, and even have traffic projections and weather predictions. But you can't beat a road atlas. Road atlases don't need signal. Even with the most expensive and most reliable truck GPS, you still can risk lose signal. That includes the ones that are even given to you by your company. My suggestion is to get a combination of all of these, but make sure you always double check using your road atlas before you move an inch. After you've plotted your course, be mindful of any metropolitan cities that you're going to have to go through or around. Several of them have very specific truck routes and truck bypasses to make sure that you don't end up somewhere you're not supposed to be. Los Angeles, New York City, and Atlanta, Georgia, just to name a few. Just make sure you're using the right map. Okay, we need to go to Midlothian, Texas. Plot a course. Okay, here. Uh, genius, that's Midgar. I said Midlothian. All right, fine. Middler. All right, first of all, that's Westeros. Secondly, all these places that you've listed so far are fake. They're fictional. They're not real. I need to find a real place. Midlothian, Texas. Oh, I'm not done yet. How about the Malibolge? Dante's Eighth Circle of Hell. All right, I know you're fucking with me, but... Could you at least be more creative about it? They both start with M, and that's all they have in common. How can you even confuse Dante's eighth circle of hell 
with Midlothian, Texas. I heard myself say it too. Also keep in mind your truck's limitations. If you're governed out at 62 and you have 11 hours of drive time available to you, that means you're only going to be able to go about 600 miles, give or take an hour. Speed limits are a bitch, but you are bound by the truck speed limit, and you have to accommodate for those changes in your time. Estimate how far you're willing to go, how far you can go, and don't take any unnecessary risks. Don't try to cheat that shit by speeding either. Cops love to pull over truck drivers because we're supposed to be more professional or something. Any discrepancies on your pre-trip inspection is going to need to be dealt with, especially if the discrepancy is DOT mandated. So you're going to have to find a shop that's within your network that's also along your route. Keep in mind the trailer's condition as well, especially if you need to get it washed out. How bad is ours anyway? Well... Oh my god! Yeesh. Yeah, we're gonna need a washout. Get to your shipper on time. And don't forget to scale your truck after you get loaded. The nearest cat scale should be the next stop immediately after you get loaded. And make sure it's a cat scale that's close. If you get pulled in for a DOT inspection, a cat scale ticket can save your ass. So you make sure you get one. Now it's time to talk about our fuel stops. The average truck has two 100 gallon tanks. And if your miles per gallon is say, let's, let's just guess, uh, seven miles per gallon, that means you're gonna go on two full tanks up to about 1400 miles before you run out of fuel. So plan your fuel stops accordingly based on your range. Stopping too often for fuel could cost you precious time. On the other hand, you don't wanna be the guy that runs out of fuel because that would be a very embarrassing phone call to make. All right, so we figured out how we're going to get to the shipper, the receiver, where to get scaled at, where we're going to fuel, and now we're going to figure out where we're going to spend the night. You need 10 hours of off-duty time, either sleeper berth or off-duty, logged in on your ELD to reset your day. Where you spend those 10 hours is entirely up to you. You can plan it at your fuel stop or you can use a rest area. Rest areas are not private property, they are government property. That means they like to close at random times for maintenance, and that can be a pain in the ass if you were counting on one. Truck stops are more reliable, but the name brand ones fill up pretty quick. Sometimes you could get lucky with a mom and pop stop, sometimes you get extra lucky and find a Walmart that allows truck parking. Just make sure that it has truck parking before you make an attempt. And you can even find truck parking at casinos. All right, let's hit the tables. No, 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 no. Not after what happened last time. All kinds of annoying, stupid fucking bullshit's gonna slow your ass down and chip away at your precious drive time. Slowdowns from accidents and construction. Bad weather. Natural disasters. Protests that become riots. Even fucking terrorist attacks. Unlikely, but it's happened. Now, unlike all the other shit that we had just listed, Hills just don't happen spontaneously. You're gonna run into those anyway. And they will slow your ass down, going up and down, if you're doing it right. So make a couple contingency plans for when shit happens. Plan a few stops that are about maybe 300 miles, maybe 200 miles. Use your own judgment. But some place is gonna be stopped short from where you plan to go that day. Something to keep in mind when your hours end up getting chipped away from getting stuck in traffic. There will be times when you're going to want to park at the first place that you see, and then you may have to get a little bit creative. But if you do, just make sure you don't block any entrance. And for fuck's sakes, don't block a fuel island. We got 25 minutes left. What the hell are you doing? You should have stopped and parked already. Relax, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry, we'll make it. What the hell do you mean we're going to make it? Well, there's no way in hell we're going to make it. You can't make the Atlanta Bypass in under 20 minutes. We'll take a shortcut. Where? Through there. Through the Metro? That's right. 
Are you fucking out of your mind?